Hi everybody, this is Daisy's Craft Patch, and I uh, apologize for my, my voice. Right now it's that time of year. I wanted to make a video today about putting epoxy resin on your tiles. Uh, I've made three tiles using alcohol ink, and this one has some mixed media ink as well on it and these are just alcohol ink they're four by four tiles and now that they have dried and they have you know sat for a couple of days especially with this ink i wanted to make sure that it was completely dry i've only used it once and <clears throat> wanted to now pour the epoxy resin on top these are four by four tiles, standard coaster size tiles. I have chosen to use art resin. It uh, comes in all different sizes. These are the four ounce bottles, a resin and a hardener. I chose them because I am chemically sensitive. Sometimes so much so that I need an EpiPen, I actually carry one with me. And this product has no VOCs, no fumes, low odor. I uh, am pretty compatible with it. I have not had a reaction. I've only used it once and was fine. Because I am sensitive, uh, I do have a mask on right now. And uh, see, just to kind of help. And I've had no problem for the very little amount of time that I'll be using it. There is no odor for me and uh, no harm. So I really appreciate this product being on the market or I would not be able to use epoxy resin on any of the art that I do. So the basic instructions once you order it are equal parts of hardener and resin. If you go onto the website, there is a really lovely chart for you that will tell you how much you need in quantity in order to cover the space that you need to cover. So for example, I did four tiles at Christmas time, and it was two ounces uh, each of the resin, so four ounces total, to cover four tiles. So about an ounce of resin for each tile was a good guide. Uh, you mix it. I've already mixed it. You mix it up equal parts. I have a kitchen scale digital that I purchased on Amazon. It was like $15. And it's one of the best investments that I've ever made. It's great to measure out your quantities for acrylic pouring, for any other type of mixing that you need to do to make sure that uh, you have equal parts when it's important. I then pour the resin in this container. I have my handy dandy plastic spatula and you mix it up. Now, as you can see, there are bubbles in this mixture. You can see them on the side here. And uh, that comes just from putting air into, there we go. That comes from putting, you know, air, incorporating air as you're mixing it. These bubbles will settle out. Uh, however, it is recommended that if you have, you know, some kind of a kitchen torch, that you can use that briefly over the top to just help bring those bubbles to the surface and help it level out more quickly. I've prepared my surface in a couple of ways. One, you wanna make sure the table that you're working on is level. Mine is, I've already tested it in the past. Two, because epoxy is liquid, it will flow. And this one will flow, it will drip. And you wanna make sure that when it hardens, you don't have these drips on your finished work. So I've taken painter's tape. I personally use frog tape. It's my favorite. This is what it looks like. Well, sorry, it's reversed, but this is uh, what it looks like or what it looked like when I bought it. I don't know if they've since changed the label. And it's really great at uh, helping to block some of that paint and absorption. What I did was take the paint or take the tape. I run one edge, the top edge across here that will leave it hanging on the bottom. And I fold it underneath, run it all the way around, fold it underneath, and then I take strips 
and cover. Now, I didn't think about this until my next one. And for this one, I actually have a strip that hangs out here and the rest of the strips go here. So all I'll have to do is pull this down and it will help to lift this tape away. Because what will happen is over time, just like if you do acrylic pouring, you'll understand the concept uh, that your paint in the epoxy same way will drip over the sides. Well, it hardens and it's a little harder than dried acrylic paint. So taking a box cutter or other type of device to try to remove it is really not that easy. Uh, so using this and protecting your surface is very, very helpful. Make sure that it's you have some height. I just have these little condiment cup uh, things and that's how I'm getting my height. It's also level. And then I'll pour the epoxy mixture on top. Now once you mix this according to the directions, you have about 40-45 minutes to work with it. And it's been maybe 10 minutes since I've gotten everything together. I mixed this together and prepared everything and now we're where we are. So we'll go ahead and pour this so that you can see. I'll move this a little bit so that you can see uh, how it pours. I've done it level so that you can see what it looks like from the side. You'll see me pour from the top and we'll go from there. So what I do, because you want to have an equal surface. People have different techniques. For me, I work in a way of if I start in one place, I want to move to another. This is the one I'll do last because I'm right-handed. I'll work from left to right. If I did this one first, I might put my arm in the epoxy. If I did the one closest to me first, I might put my arm in the epoxy while I'm working on the other pieces. So think about your workflow while you are getting ready to do this so that you have uh, the least mess possible. And I, I know this from experience because my hairdresser f spent a little bit of time trying to get epoxy out of my hair. And I spent a little bit of time trying to get it off of my clothes because I was not mindful of this kind of workflow as I was doing this for the first time. So it's always great to learn from the experiences of others. So let's go ahead uh, and pour. I usually will use just the stick to start with the edge. Uh, that helps me to kind of get a guide of a boundary. Like I said, everybody has a different way. You do it your way. Uh, whatever works easier. I'm tempted to get a squeeze bottle or something and shake and mix and then pour it from a nozzle and see if that works. But I don't quite know if it will. Now, as you can see, or perhaps not, there we go. It's already starting to drip. And that's what we want to avoid sticking on our, the back of our piece. Now, when this is dry, I will take the tape off. I have cork that I will fix to the back and that will be uh, the finished product. So they will be able to be used as coasters. Now, some of you may be wondering, is the epoxy uh, resist water resistant? Well, it shouldn't absorb the water, but it will, it will not absorb the water, which means that when you have something on here, then uh, the water will also be on the surface. So if you're putting a cup on here, just be aware that it's not a water absorbent coaster and the bottom of your cup will probably be wet. These are kind of more decorative anyway, as opposed to actually using for a cup, but you could maybe for a mug of tea or something like that. Now I'm using the spatula to move this all along uh, around the surface. I do not prefer a lot of waste. So that's why I do it this way. I learned from the first time that I did this that just pouring it on because it does spread out will end up in most of your material being on the 
Now you can see it's cloudy because those are the bubbles. I'm moving this around a little bit to level out the surface and cover a couple of gaps here. And I'll set this down and I'll move on to the next piece. Okay, so we have the last little bit here, and now the resin is on. Now you can see I have a little bit left. That's all right, because once we're done here, I do have a small side project that I need to just put a little bit of resin on, and I'll use that little bit. So that's perfect, measured out. I had two, two one ounce each of resin and hardener and mixed it. This will need to dry for... It may be 48 hours, I can't remember. It may only be 24. I'll have to double check the website. I usually leave it sit for a couple of days for good measure. Uh, that's just me. But I, I do believe the website says 24 hours. As you can see, we have some drips here. And as you see them, if you can catch them, it certainly makes it easier later. But that's why you prepare your surface because all of this should just come off later on. And if you work with your product well and you're aware of your surface, you will have very, very minimal dripping. Uh, now the next step is going to be to get the bubbles out. So first, let's take the camera here. You can see this is a little bit uh, cloudy because of those air bubbles. So we will take our torch here and it's very, uh, there we go. If I just quickly rub it across the top, the bubbles I don't know that you can see what's happening, uh, but those bubbles are just disappearing from the surface. And it doesn't take a lot at all. You actually don't want to heat cure this. So uh, now we have some great, you can actually see what a difference and how things look. And now it just needs to set level and it needs to set to cure. And the rest of the bubbles will rise to the top and filter themselves out. I don't see any big ones because of the way that I poured. I do not see any large ones that need to be popped. But if you do see that kind of bubble, you can use a stick or a pin or whatever and just kind of work on popping the bubbles. And I'll come back uh, probably every 20 minutes or so and do this to get the drips off as I can. That will help later in taking the tape off because I also don't want to inadvertently affix the tape permanently to this. Uh, that is That is not my intent. So that's it. But as you can see, very minimal dripping because I was mindful of my space. So I hope this helps you. Happy pouring. And again, this is uh, Daisy's Craft Patch using art resin, high gloss epoxy resin, clear coat, no VOCs, no fumes, non-flammable, very low odor. Uh, make sure that you're using in a good ventilated area, which I am. And again, because I am sensitive, I do have a mask on for extra measure. Uh, 
I have done this once before and I have had no reaction. So thanks Art Resin for making that product. Be mindful of your workspace as a review, lay out your workflow, mix this in equal parts. Look at the website for the volume that you need. You have 45 minutes to work with it and make sure that you get out as many bubbles as you can in the beginning and be mindful of your drips. So in a couple of days, these will be ready and the corks will go on the bottom and they will make uh, great pay it forwards. So have a great day and happy creating. Now that we have had our epoxy resin harden for a few days, let's see what the results are. Now, I believe the instructions say 24 hours. I usually let things sit for a couple of days for a good measure just because and I don't always have the time to uh, get to something after 24 hours. So we've poured the resin on, let it sit, and now let's go ahead and peel off. Now as we discussed before, I protected the tile. You see you have some drips of epoxy resin as it dries and hardens. So I protected the tile with painter's tape. And let's go ahead and peel that off and see if it works. Now this is just the second time I've used the epoxy resin. The first time I did not use tape to protect the edges and it was a hot mess. So now we're using the tape because the idea is that as this strips and dries when you take the tape off you will not need to worry about having the drips all over. So we'll do this one in real time and then we'll do the other three. I'll speed up the video but it seems to be working really well. The drips are coming off, the hardened drips are coming off with the painter's tape. I'm just removing the tape here. Next time maybe I'd put a strip across the bottom to help lift this later, but really it's no big deal. Uh, see the hardened drips are now on the tape instead of your tile. So that's really nice because the last time that I did this, which is the first time that I did it ever, like I said it was a hot mess. I spent a few days trying to use a knife, box cutting knife, to get the epoxy off and it didn't work completely well. So here's the tile and boy it's nice. Good edges, no drips on the back and the tile itself looks really really good. So I'll go ahead and do the others and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so we have uh, our tiles done and as you saw I took everything off of the edges and off of the back. There are a couple of spots because this tape does adhere pretty well as long as you press well uh, and that's what you want to do because you don't want the epoxy filling in the sides and you saw that on a couple of spots I had to uh, take the knife 
and run it across the edges because that's exactly what happened. The tape wasn't adhered enough to the edge to drip over, it kind of dripped through. Uh, but overall, just a couple of slight spots. The first time that I did this, like I said, I had drips all over the place. It was pretty bad. So uh, yeah, really good. I just had a little piece of tape here. I'll go ahead and get that off. If you don't have a box cutter, I firmly enthusiastically suggest that if you're able to be dexterous enough to handle one, please get one because they come in very handy. And now here are the tiles. So tile one, alcohol ink, with the epoxy, okay. tile two, very nice. And tile three. So happy decorating, happy use of resin. And uh, I'll clean these up and then they'll be ready to gift. Have a great day.